Good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Walter Alvaran. I am uh, an assistant state conservationist for field operations uh, here in the state of Florida for the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Thank you. <coughs> uh, also along with me here today is Israel Vega. Israel is our district conservationist for the Sarasota Field Office uh, covering Manatee. Uh, Sarasota and Charlotte counties. Our agency, the NRCS, is one of many of the United States Department of Agriculture. Uh, we have been around uh, for a little bit of uh, over 80 years, providing leadership in partnership effort to help private landowners conserve their soil, soil water, and other natural resources. Our mission is uh, helping people help the land. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, uh, we've been around for a little bit over 80 years. Our agency was created in 1935. Uh, we were formerly known as the Soil Conservation Service because you know, in the past, that's basically what we did. We worked with producers to help, address, help them address uh, soil erosion concerns. But as the years have gone by, uh, we have be become more engaged with uh, working with producers, not only on the soil conservation, but several other uh, resource concerns. As such, basically in the 1990s, our name was changed to the natural, what is today, the Natural Resources Conservation Service to better reflect uh, the broad and scope of our agency's mission. So, uh, so currently, we carry on this legacy by working with, uh, to protect soil, our nation's soil, water, airs, plants, uh, animals, and energy. And we work with farmers and ranchers to help them uh, make good conservation decisions on their lands and as such protect the natural resources while maintaining or improving their agricultural productivity. That is one of the things that we always have you know, in, in mind to help producers improve on their agricultural productivity. So forms of assistance, uh, our programs are voluntary. Uh, we're not a regulatory agency. Uh, producers have to apply to be able to participate from our programs. And when, when they do, we provide them with uh, technical guidance, technical assistance, and also financial assistance. So here in the slide, we have uh, basically our two types of assistance, conservation technical assistance, which is technical assistance, conservation planning, and financial assistance, which is provided through the financial system programs. Uh, so let, conservation planning, basically, you know, Participants or clients, producers, have to contact our, our, you know, one of our offices. And basically here in Area 3, we're uh, Florida NRCS Area 3, and we cover 16 counties. We have field offices located in Bartow, Cocoa, Wachula, Kissimmee, Tavares, uh, Sarasota, San Antonio, and Plant City. And we also have an office here in Fort Myers. Uh, so upon contacting the office, you will first be provided with uh, technical assistance for conservation planning. Many of you will probably hear first about NRCS through the release of information about our financial assistance programs, you know, financial assistance that is available. But basically, you know, the process starts with conservation planning. The financial assistance is basically a tool that we have available to help producers implement those, you know, implement the conservation plan. So the conservation plan, the conservation plan assistance, we provide using a nine-step conservation planning process, which basically, I'm not gonna go through, the, through these steps, but basically they're, they're listed here, are nine steps, and basically what we do is, you know, in these nine steps is we go out to your property, we identify your goals and objectives, we do a resource assessment of the property. We identify resource concerns, and once we have identified those resource concerns, we come up with solutions to address 
any you know, resource concern that may be present on your farm or operation. Uh, those proposed solutions are basically up, are approved conservation practices. And uh, you know, practices that NRC has, has developed through the use of you know, using sound si science. So you know, like I mentioned, we go out, we identify research concerns, we propose some solutions, some conservation practices to address those. And then it's basically a discussion with the producer as to based on his goals and objectives, you know, what he may be able to implement. So the record of these decisions of, you know, what we're going to implement to address, you know, those risk concerns, that is basically what turns into the conservation plan. And, uh, and that's basically after that is when the financial assistance programs come in. And I also want to mention that, you know, when producers apply for financial assistance, those producers that have already a conservation plan developed, they will be given higher points throughout the evaluation process for that financial assistance. And before we go into the financial assistance, I just want to go through uh, our basically types of practices. Uh, co the conservation practices are basically divided on structural, vegetative, and management. Uh, for example, some of our structural practices, irrigation practices to uh, uh, water conservation on the cropland areas, uh, for livestock operations, livestock, fen livestock fencing, uh, livestock watering facilities, and other several practices as well as brush management and pest management for control of invasive. So then let's talk about our financial system programs. Our financial system programs were authorized, some of them were reauthorized through the uh, 2014 Farm Bill, also known as the 2014 Agriculture Act. Uh, the 2014 Agriculture Act has helped many thousands of uh, producers and people across the nation. It has helped producers uh, address resource concerns, install many conservation practices, and it has helped also uh, some of them build resilience to overcome challenges related to climate change. So financial system programs, basically the some of our main programs is the environmental quality incentive programs, and that is one that we're going to be covering in more detail today. We also have the conservation stewardship program, previously known, there was a previous version through another farm bill that was the conservation security program. This is basically that same program. And then the agriculture conservation easement program. And we're not going to cover that also today because uh, I believe last year at this event, last year, that program, there was a presentation about this program. And basically, you know, when, like I mentioned, the financial assistance is a tool to implement, you know, that conservation, uh, conservation practices identified needed for, you know, producers' operation. And basically, we do that through providing contracts, you know, we obligate funding based on, you know, the different practices, based on that year's cost estimate, and then once the practices are implemented, then we can pay for, you know, those practices that have been installed. So now I'm going to leave you with Israel Vega, and Israel is going to cover in more detail about the environmental quality incentive programs. Thank you, Walter. Like Walters mentioned, my name is Israel Vega. I'm the district conservation conservationist at the Minnesota Service Center, and we cover three counties, Charlotte, Manatee County, and Sarasota County. Um, today, I will be presenting our m main program, the most popular program that we have is e the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. Um, and we have other programs um, under the farm, farm Bill, but this one is the most common one. Um, first, let's start of what is EQIP. EQIP is um, the Environmental Equality Incentive Program, and it's a volunteer program. Um, most of our program are volunteer. Pretty much every, all programs are. Um, and they provide financial assistance and technical assistance um, to producers 
uh, to address resource concerns uh, to, to improve water, so soil, uh, wildlife, etc. cetera. Um, and um, EQIP is to help also producers to meet federal, state, tribal, and local environmental um, regulations. So, um, and who can apply through our EQIP or any or our programs? Are anyone that owns uh, agricultural land or um, uh, are um, a producer that are engaged in agricultural, such as livestock, um, forest production, etc. Um, how does equip work? So equip, like I said before, is a uh, part of the Farm Bill uh, le legislation. Um, provided to NRCS with authority to provide financial assistance um, payment through EQIP to eligible producers to help imp imp implement approved conservation practice on eligible land. What happens once you get a contract? Okay, landowners are paid um, based on um, the practice that they install and it, the payment will be after uh, the practice is certified and it's um, a fixed payment that is already established by the cost list, depending on what type of land use. Um, also, program particip participant m may not exceed $450,000 per farm bill. So we currently are under the 2014 farm bill, which is run every five years. So it started back in 2014 and expired in 2018. Um, farm bill legislation also has established that conservation program benefit to are limited to individual or entities with an adjusted growth income that cannot exceed 900,000 um, per year. It have to be less or uh, uh, at 900,000. And the way they, we evaluate that is taking the tax um, for the, the, th the last three tax um, years um, that immediately preceding the year of the original contract obligation. Um, under producers can also qualify under the historical underserved producers. That's a category that um, NRCS have for that, and they can follow on any of the following limited resource farmer or rancher, beginner farmer, social disadvantaged producer, um, and tribal and veteran. Um, may be eligible for increase, the, the difference is that they may be eligible for increased practice payment. Um, if you have a specific uh, or concern about each category, what I can say, just give us a call and we go and look the specific um, category that may the producer may fall fall into. Uh, our general equip, um, general equip conservation almost um, almost all ag agricultural land use um, covers almost all agricultural use. Equip payment init initially were based on fifty percent, but now it's a fixed rate um, that is established by the um, uh, NRCS regional. Uh, committee and is based is established on a cost list. The cost list is a um, it can be found on on the web, on our NRCS Florida website and for each um, uh, farm pool like pasture, cropland, etc. Uh, NRCS staff will visit visit the farm. And ran or ranch and write a personal conservation plan with the conservation practice we can submit for a cost share. But prior to that, the, that visit, we help the producer to establish a farm record. That means that the farm has to have a farm number and track number by FSA, which is the, um, uh, the agency we work together uh, which, uh, which is FSA, Farm Service Agency, and they need to establish their record and fill out some 
AGA forms and wetland determination forms, uh, but we help them to go through that and then we um, schedule a farm visit to determine what resource concerns are there and how we can uh, address those resource concerns. The most common practice includes fencing, herbaceous weed control, livestock well, electric solar pump, water facility, prescribed burning, micro-irrigation system, polytube and emitter replacement, mulching, seasonal high tunnel, and like I say, um, the cost list is a public document and could be found in our website. Or you can call uh, your local um, F, uh, NRCS field office and we can provide that through email or by email. Um, application are taken year-round. Um, batching date is usually the end of October and application funding start in March, April. Um, this year that's an incorrect batching period. They say December 18 but this year has been changed. That's what used to be. This year, the batching period, uh, the deadline for submitting application is October 21st. October 21st. Um, application are funded by ranking in the state, in the state from the top down until funds run out. So, every application that makes before or by October 21st will be evaluated for fiscal year 2004 funding of fiscal year 2017. Um, new practices added to equip this year, um, or uh, let's say last year, it was uh, giant smog grass treatment, which uh, is now under category one in the invasive species, wind mills for livestock water systems, and aquaculture, they are used, we used, we used to not um, have that um, category on equip, but it's being added and they have their own cost list. Um, if you know anyone or any producer interested on practices under aquaculture, just call the office and we try to answer all the question. If we, not, if we don't have the question right away, we will find it and send it. But we certainly will evaluate this, the operation and we will come with some recommendation and potentially practice that we can technical, provide the technical assistance and the financial assistance. Equip initiative program, um, they're e uh, equipped, they have several initiatives um, like seasonal high tunnel, organic initiative, on farm energy initiative, air quality initiative, loan lift initiative, and Everglaze initiative. That, comp that the last one have couple counties that are in, uh, into that initiative. Charlotte County have just the southeast section of, or area that are into that initiative. Seasonal high tunnel, this practice assists agricultural producer to extend the growing season. It's a high tunnel to, that needs to be Crop needs to be planted in gr on the ground, not on table. It has to be just on the ground. Uh, crop must be planted right there. Organic initiative is the other, the other one. The organic initiative provides financial assistance to implement a bra broad set of conservation practice um, to assist organic producer in addressing resource concerns, including but not limited to assist with developing a conservation plan, establish buffer zones, planning and installing pollinator habitat, improve soil quality and organic matter while minimizing erosion, in developing a grazing plan and supportive livestock practice, improving irrigation efficiency and enhancing cropping rotation and nutrient management. Also, I need to mention that under organic initiative, we can uh, with you through the, um, or, um, certification and we have some practice that will, um, will will assist you financially to get that USDA organic certification. Um, 
the National Lone Leaf Pine Initiative is just to restore the lone leaf ecosystem. And there are several states, nine states, that are within that um, initiative. Uh, we have, again, we have practice from planting to pre site preparation. And we, um, it, this initiative will require a stewardship plan from Forestry Service with the recommendations of uh, the maintenance uh, and preparation to establish the lone leaf pine. On farm energy initiative, through the Equip National on Farm Energy Initiative, financial assistance is available for site specific energy analysis of eligible farmstead and il irrigation system. This analysis is known as an Agricultural Energy Management Plan, or ACM, is completed by NRCS certified technical service provider. So it's someone outside NRCS, but is approved by NRCS to do that type of um, study or audit, that we call it. Um, the ACM meets industry standard and clearly shows itemized energy use by individual systems to establish a baseline for electricity and other full improvement, recommendation for equipment improvement and upgrade, amount of potential energy reduction and financial saving for each recommendation, cost estimate of potential improvement. Everything that shows on that audit or study, that, that we, that's the first step, um, we, we will help the producer to make the changes to save the energy um, to take them to the to w the purpose of uh, reducing the energy on farm and the Everglade initiative in Charlotte um, which I mentioned early compound several county those that are beige color but only Charlotte is only on the um, Southeast section. Well, up to here, that's my presentation. Um, if you have any question, um, feel free to contact the office or you, the local office. And if you're not a producer but you know anyone that may be interested on our program, please uh, pass the information or the contact information and we will be more than glad to assist them.